Hey everyone, this is Jay and welcome to a different style of the Photography Junkie podcast. On this week's show, me and my guests will be discussing an aspect of mental health uh, that a lot of artists will relate to. Uh, this That is a combination of uh, self-doubt and imposter syndrome. Uh, we'll be working through my own journey uh, with these things so that hopefully if you relate to it, then that may help you too. But before I introduce my guests, I just want to say that any form of mental health issues is important to get it out, the, the, get it out of you and speak to somebody. Uh, what happens if you don't is that issue then becomes a poison that can be as debilitating as any other sickness. So when it comes to getting that poison out of you, it does not matter how you do it, so long as you do. Uh, that can be in a form of getting professional help or even go to a forest and screaming it at the top of your lungs uh, it's the whole process of getting it out. In my case, it's going to be a case of uh, speaking to somebody that I trust and uh, I'm going to be bringing you along with me on that journey. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce my uh, co-host this week uh, for the podcast and that is Kelly. Welcome Kelly. Hello, I am. <laughs> I'm like, hello, I'm waiting for someone to say hello back. My name's Kelly, yeah. Lovely to, um, I feel honoured to be a part of this. First of all, I want to say thank you for coming on. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a, a different one for uh, for the show. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, sort of uh, introduce and and see what is it that you do, Kelly. What is it I do? Well, my name is Kelly Reed. I'm a yogic mentor and a self care specialist. So um, I accidentally stumbled across yoga uh, in 2009 when I was a lounge singer. I'm predominantly an artist, uh, a lounge well, a singer, and I just accidentally came across yoga. Uh, and since then, it's really helped me with my own self doubt, my own low self esteem. Um, I am certified 500 hours, but ultimately I have been teaching 10,000 hours over the 14 years. So I am qualified as a yoga teacher, but I really do pride myself on the experience that I have witnessed from three-year-olds to 80-year-olds, from guys that have just come out of prison to uh, people that are recovering alcoholics from people from all backgrounds. But the main medicine that I have experienced is my own. And that's what I share. And I'd like to think one of the big things that I bring to the table is I'm good at listening, being non-judgmental, and then ultimately people like yourself can talk out so they don't feel lonely. And that's so uh, being a, a, a singer, an artist, um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's probably fair to say that you've probably suffered from your own uh, self-doubt and imposter syndrome at some point or another. Yes, one million percent. So much so. In fact, it might have been... A few months before I went to India, I got booed off stage in this dodgy hotel in Blackpool and uh, it was one of the lowest. I laugh because it, I mean, it's not funny, but I laugh because it was such a turning point for me. I was so bothered about what the audience was thinking and my overthinking mind that the timing was off, the lyrics were forgotten. And I came off stage and my grandma, who I love dearly, was like, well, you look very beautiful. In other words, I sounded crap because I just let my anxiety completely take over. So, yeah, it took about three days of crying in the shower and speaking to my friends and, and getting up. But it was excruciating, really, what, really painful. What do you think it was that caused it? Just anxiety and, and not focusing on the job at hand, which was singing. And um, it was probably, I didn't necessarily speak to people at that point. So it was probably that and just anxiety. Anxiety, low self-esteem. And I didn't have a practice. I wasn't looking after myself. My food wasn't good. I was drinking alcohol regularly. So, you know, since then, I've completely changed my life. And doing the actions have really helped me. Uh, be more aware of it. So, um, it, so whenever somebody's sort of listening to this, the, they're going to know it's, it's it's coming from from a place of experience. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's nice to hear. But yeah, very much. And I think sometimes, especially now, when people first meet me, they don't they don't uh, they assume that I've never had it. No. And I still have it. It still pops up. I have the awareness of tools to go to to just simmer it down. So, so, yes. so how many people would you say that you um, have helped through sort of similar sort of uh, situations or, or feelings? 
Mm, in a group setting, thousands. In one to one, uh, over two hundred people. In a one to one setting. So, so sort of uh, moving towards the uh, the topic at hand. It's a bit different from a, a usual show, in that um, nothing has been planned ahead of time beyond uh, the fact that I am going to put my hands, uh, put myself in the hands of Kelly, and. Um, it's going to be her show this week and uh, so if I was to uh, come to you as as do you call them customer or a client a client, client. okay so if mm-hmm. I was to if I was to come to you as as a client and say hi I'm I'm Jay I, I, I host a podcast and I suffer with crippling anxiety and 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 stage fright sometimes, um, and and just that whole imposter syndrome as well. Um, what whereabouts would you start in that process? I'd probably ask you a question of when when did it first start, or when did you first notice it get really severe? That would be the first question. So uh, for me, similar to yourself, um, I had a. a bit of a, a bad experience uh, when it came to uh, before photography it was music for me and I was a DJ and this was around about the time of MySpace and I had several thousand sort of followers on that and I decided to have a, a, a big a big night where I hired out a club and spent all year working the day job so that I could pay the staff on the evening, um, get the flyers out, and it it was all looking great. And on the night itself, uh, after literally a year of prep uh, for this one night, even had my own t-shirt printed for it, um, 11 people showed up, and, and five of those people I knew. <laughs> so... Um, mm. As you can imagine, from uh, from having built myself up in my own mind, it was uh, somewhat humbling, and I, I've hardly made music since. And we're probably talking twenty years at this point now. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so my other question would be, was there another time before that that you felt that people didn't turn up or like a party or something when so, you were younger? So as, um, as somebody on the autism spectrum, um, but not knowing it until I was an adult, uh, looking back on my childhood, um, was uh, spent a lot of time trying to fit in and trying to be liked by people and not understanding why they either didn't want me as part of their group or or just general sort of rejection anyway. So um, naturally, as, as that went on through the years, um, you, you build up a, a sort of, well, I must be at fault. I, I, I'm the one that's the bad. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And it's interesting, isn't it? That voice or that thoughts, would you say you call your thoughts real? All of them are real? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, so that, I'm really, you telling me that you're autistic as well, which I really relate to, that's a very interesting part in this as well, because your life and how you see and feel life is different to others, which in my opinion is like a gift. I see it as a gift. That's probably why you're a genius, you know, at music and stuff. So I, in my opinion, I see that as a gift. Just want to say that, give you a compliment there. Thank <laughs> so you. To you. No, you're welcome. It's important. Okay, so with this, because I believe, and this is a yogic philosophy, but also from my own experience, that some of the thoughts that we have are not real. <laughs> they're not real. And they're not fact. So one of the imposter things, uh, the, the things to help with imposter syndrome, is to ask, is it fact? 
you know, like when you, the thing that come up that you just said that no one likes me or, you know, I feel rejected. Like, what about your close friends that know you? Like kind of observing it, like, is it fact? And is that always the case? Because sometimes I believe that there's like the analytical voice, I call it like the overthinker, which is chattering and saying all that stuff. But then sometimes, I'm, have you experienced like a, a wisdom that comes in every now and again? Like, don't worry, Jay, you're okay. Like that kind of voice. Yeah, usually um, um, if if there's no way out, um, the, the, there's usually that uh, that voice that, that comes in um, and, and says, like, you've gotten through other stuff. Nice. I like that. That's awesome. I heard the other day, I love this sentence, and I really do believe it's true. Let me see if I can do it justice by putting all the words in the right order. <laughs> but anxiety is the ability to forget that you're capable. You know, that's kind of it. Like Anxiety is basically telling us that we're not capable of all the other stuff that we've overcome before. I personally have a journal, and so do my clients, where all the stuff that they've overcome all this stuff that we forget we'll have amnesia as humans there's like a page of things that you've overcome before so when we're having that moment it's like oh no actually mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and it's a remembering i think sometimes we need it on paper because the overthinking mind which is so normal and it happens to me it's taking that bird's eye view on the thoughts and being oh thank you for that <laughs> thank you for all that chatter because it's obviously there for a reason but is that fact and and then you can revert to something like you know a list yeah yeah That's i mean i can I, I can see how that would work yeah this is just one of many tools because when you're in it you're in it you know i think sometimes the la the voice gets so loud in fact one of my clients calls her anxiety and the imposter syndrome she started calling it gertrude <laughs> and as weird or as crazy as that sounds like there's a name for the overthinking because it's not always, it can get louder and louder and louder. And what I believe and have experienced, and the same with my clients, is that when they're meditating, when they're investing into themselves, when they're having time in nature, the net or the Gertrude, for example, anxiety, is quieter. It gets quieter. It's not the predominant driver. And, and this is why I really take on the foundation of self-care is important. There is something we can do about it. It's an empowering choice. And we can do something about it. And that's how I've personally been able to navigate the insecurities and the imposter because I'm taking control by doing something every day in loving action, not because I should do and I have to, but because I want to. And that's another way that you can nurture that loud voice, which it sounds crazy, but there there is a wisdom that comes up. And that for me is when you relax, that wisdom can come in. But there is some stuff that you have to do to make yourself feel safe. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense for me. Um, what, what sort of things for you um, put, gets you to put you into that space, so to speak? Honestly, honestly, a lot, but things that I love to do. So if I give you an example about my self-care, and some people will be like, oh, do I have time for that? But um, when it comes to the health, I make time. So uh, in the morning, every day, I wake up and think my gratitudes. I think the things I'm grateful for, even if it's just three things while I'm horizontal in bed. Then I actually do Wim Hof uh, breathing, which I really highly recommend. The guy's a great method and quick. Uh, then I meditate. Some days, five out of seven, I work out because I need to release the energy in the body and also the tension in the body. I dance and then I sing. Uh, and then I write a list. I love a good list. My grandma said to me, and I'll never forget, if you put it on a list, it's not in your head. <laughs> That's like, okay. I'm going to get it out, put it on a paper. And so things like that help me. But it's interesting. I can get all that done within an hour. But with my clients, because they're so busy, and some of them are CEOs or professionals or just moms and dads, their self-care is like 15 minutes. So I come in, have a look at their work week, have a look at the time that they've got, and make something so doable and so simple that they have less excuses not to do it. It's 15 minutes, and then I'm the cheerleader that um, inspires them to do it regularly. So it's, you can do something in 15 minutes, I believe. I've seen it. 
there's a guy that had bipolar who's an amazing guy who's a really talented artist on a cruise ship I met years ago and he worked with Wim Hof predominantly and he just did 10 minutes a day and it really helped him see I'm, I'm definitely one when it comes to the uh, to the old lists as well uh, especially when mm. I'm planning something because uh, my brain being as as active as it can be um I've generally got something planned, something that I'm working on, something that I'm intending on working on, and uh, and so the the list thing definitely helps me in terms of uh, getting that plan right. That's awesome. I like that. I like that you like a good list. It is. Some people don't like it, you know. And I spoke to my neighbour. She said, "I don't like this. I like to go with the flow." And I'm like, "I understand. I understand." But some people need structure, and I think structure can make us feel safe, you know. In, in, in my brain, I always describe it as having train lines and so many train lines next to each other. And mm. each of those is a thought process. And one of those train lines can be taken up by simply the sounds that I'm hearing. Another one taken up by something that I'm doing. And then once those train lines run out, that's when I start to panic. Okay. Because that the trains sense. crash. Okay, because there's a lot running at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Mean? Okay. My, okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions now that I would do. And usually I would do this before I would speak to the client, so I have it pre-planned. So I'm going to see how fast I can do this on this um, recording. And, and these questions aren't to make you feel judged. You know, these are so I have the information so I can give you some action. Okay? Okay. Um, what is your current self-care? Meaning practice and things like that. Uh, I think at the moment it probably extends to me walking the dog. Okay, walking the dog. And that's in nature as well, right? Yes. Yeah. There's some people walking concrete, just so you know. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what do you need to hear the most? You know, when you're having imposter self doubt, what do you need to hear? Probably, you can do this. You can do this. I've always got that uh, that character in my head yeah, that comes up on the TV. You can do it. <laughs> I don't know which one you mean, but I was thinking of the woman with the arm. I, 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 think, it was, I think it was on... Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, that that golf um, comedy Adam Sandler one. Um, there's a, a Spanish, I think Spanish guy on there goes, you can do it. <laughs> I love it. Well, that would get me going. Okay, I like that. You've just got a visual in my head. I think that's a bit of a creative as well. Who can do it? Okay, that that is in your head now. Whenever have, you're having those moments, I've just decided. Um, and what's your food and diet like? Um... It's not so much as a uh, five a day, more of a five a week. Okay, that's okay. honest. Um, one, the reason why I ask that, and this is going down a big topic, that your gut and our head, and now there's proof, our gut and head are related. So I noticed with my eating, I would get more anxious when I was eating, not as good, because the gut is connected to the brain. So. And you can read many books about it. There's some great information out there that it is connected. Yeah, I, I would agree on that one. Um, I, I do um, recognize that when when I've had too many takeouts, uh, I, I feel pretty shitty. Yeah, <laughs> it was so good. I was a cheesy chips kind of girl. I still like chips to this day, you know what I mean? Oh, ch cheesy chips. That was my go-to and the takeaway. Anyway, I'm digressing. But um, yeah, and to be honest, inflammation in our stomach can cause acid and then, you know, the non-medical term, it's just not good for the brain. But this is something that we take ownership of when we do have anxiety and, and when we do feel like self-doubt creeps in. It's like, where can I nourish myself? You can do it because I have to, and if I don't do it, that's just not, I don't, I don't feel that that's a very productive way of looking at it. You see yourself as a young boy, and you're like, how can I look after you? How can I look after you as well as I look after my dog? Or how how can I look after you like you're my best friend? Because interestingly enough, 
and this happens to all of us sometimes, we are so, we are much like to look after other people way better than we're looking after ourselves. So that's why I say kind of see yourself as a young boy and be like, how would I treat this little boy and how would I feed him food out of love? How would I look after him? Yeah, I mean, my dog definitely eats better than I do. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> because you love him. You love him. Um, okay. So the other question would be, hmm, ah, I wanted to address, you know, and you said um, on this recording, I'm just going to hand myself over to you and you can fix me. But, oh, okay. Um, and the approach that I take with the mentoring is I hopefully, hopefully, I'm here to empower you. Like you have a choice to do something. Like to fix is kind of, in my opinion, disrespectful because I respect you and trust that you're gonna do something for yourself. And I also, with clients getting codependent, I wanna inspire them to action. So when it's done and solidified habitual pattern, then I can just bow out and then they've got consistency. The challenging thing is that self-care, doing it regularly, can take a little bit of a rhythm to get into. But what is your why? And my question now would be to you, why Why do you think, what's your desire of looking after yourself? Like, why would you? So you're going to have a self-care routine and hopefully you're going to implement it, but what's your why? Well, um, I'm over 40 now. Um, you're not. I am. <laughs> and uh, there is that, there is that, um, you, you get to a certain point where you just think, I don't want this to end too soon. <laughs> I, I've got too much mm. to do. You mean your life and your health? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want to be healthy longer? And I don't know, I mean, I haven't heard your work, but I can imagine that, you know, you're talented and someone said this to me once and i want to say it to you because it kind of stuck in so your songs are amazing kelly if you don't do it it's criminal <laughs> i was like what <laughs> like yes it's criminal and i don't know the fear just kind of got me excited to do something about it but like your what you do is important for the world to hear so that would be a why right i, I think it's important for me too because when i don't release um i explode so, like so I, like I have to be creating like something every week. So it would feel really nice it being out and people are actually listening to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, everyone's got their own taste and everything, and I fully accept that I am not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are going to be some people who... Um, use my knowledge in photography videography music even um in, in order to help their journey and um I, I get regular emails asking how do i do this in photography and and, and that and, and it makes makes me feel good mm. I'm like we call that help us high in, in my world help us high and being of service because you're helping people yeah, yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the um, bring back the podcast because I had it before, and the the demons came in, and um, I didn't surround myself with the correct people, and it it tailed off. Um, but one thing I was super proud of was the interviews that I managed to do uh, during that time, and slowly those interviews are, are making its way back onto this podcast as well as the new ones. And and so um, I'm in I'm in a different place than I was then. That's really nice to hear as well. And you hit the nail on the head when you said about the friends that you surround yourself with. My other question would be, you know, who are your friends? How many do you have? And are they people you want to be in the future? Uh, true friends. I've always run on the opinion that you shouldn't be able to count them all on one hand. Nice, that's very wise. And the, am I right in thinking the friends that you have, they're small but quality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, and then I've got a, a larger circle of ones where um, but I still class them as friends, but they're not my sort of inner core of, of friends. Yeah, 
the uh, your B your B list for your Christmas card. <laughs> um, I have my tears. <laughs> we will probably go from A star to A. <laughs> oh, I like it. You're lovely. I'm like, no, I've got one and two, three. <laughs> but yeah, okay. lucky at all if they get a Christmas card for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a no, Merry Christmas. Hey, well, at least you save in paper. It's positive. It's positive. That's true. Um, yeah. <laughs> There was something else I was going to say. So, ah, so this bit is, um, this is a big topic, to be honest, and it's one I'm really passionate about. And you'll probably be like, why? Because you're not a man. <laughs> but I'm really passionate about men talking to other men in a safe space. I mean, there's one thing I do. I mean, I pro predominantly, not predominantly, but I do teach guys, but I do know the importance of a male having a male role model because um, guys being able to talk about it, and this is why I think you're very wise and mature, guys being feeling uh, safe enough to talk about stuff, yeah, I think is really important. And in this world, especially the Western world, in Bali it's different, people do men's circle every week, but in the Western world, guys feel lonely and they're told to stick it in, don't talk about it, not allowed to cry, toughen it up. And because I know mental health and I've really, really studied it, and because my mom had depression, my granddad had depression, the loneliness of not talking, it's not going to fix everything. And I know men are different, like they just want to say it and then they close up again. It's so important to have a release of talking it out to the people you can trust and respect. And I think as a man, that's also going to help with anxiety. Because if you have someone that will reflect or just listen, it will make you, one, you've got rid of it, the poison, uh, by just talking. And then you felt heard and not alone. And if you do have a small group of friends to do that with and you're not sharing, I think that that's another tool that you can use. Yeah, I mean, as as, as somebody that um, has had depression since they were very young, um, mm. I've, as part of my coping mechanisms for that, um, my, my sort of immediate circle of friends, not all, not all male, to be fair, um, mm -hmm mainly female for some some reason i feel comfortable more comfortable talking to women than well, we I are do great men. we are great i'll say that we're not like, better than men but we are great <laughs> yeah yeah i would agree on that one um but i i for me personally i i find it easier to talk to women than i do to men um and my immediate circle um they are the ones that are there when i do crash and um, I don't crash so hard anymore, which is which is great. I don't go to that sort of dangerous place. Um, mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's it's not like I can't say that happened in the past. Okay, that's yeah. Thank you for that. That's nice to share. Would you be open to um, be open to meet a, a man that you respect, like uh, a mentor of some sort? Specifically, a male. Yeah, the reason why I know this sounds a bit like oh, you, you know you have to stick to your own groups, <laughs> but there's there's a reason for this. It's like this light mindedness. Like you're a man, you know what you need. You know, like because I know it's few and far between in England and maybe in being general, but a man that can just listen and that is you know maybe twenty years older than you and, and he can just listen to you. While I, while I think I could do that for somebody else. Uh, I don't think I could do it for me. Um, I, I think it comes from I, I didn't didn't have that male influence growing up. Um, I was brought up in an all female household. Um, father wasn't around, that sort of thing. And so it's just sort of ingrained in me to to trust women more than men. Okay. Um, would I be able to do that for somebody else? Yeah, I think I could. What do you mean for someone else? So, so mm -hmm. if somebody else was was having problems, could I be that oh, bigger for them? Uh, yeah. yeah, I could. Okay. But, but for me, for me to reach out to a another male would be would be quite difficult. Okay, and that what you just said makes complete sense, and I didn't know that about you. Awesome. So maybe if you can hold space for someone, because in my eyes you're a wise not old, mature man, you could definitely, you know, help someone who's younger who feels lost 100%. And I think it's important that I call it males are emotionally intelligent. And if they can have someone to listen to, it can make the other guy feel not alone. 
there's an emotional intelligence that I feel that sometimes men lack and it's not because they're bad in any way I actually adore men like I really do if you knew my relationship history you'll know I really like men but from a, a point of view that they're so brilliant and they have direction and focus we're talking about healthy men and I think it's really important for men to have support um, so yeah maybe if you are able to give to someone and then that would be something to work on like what you just told me is like a big nugget of information that is something that you could work on trusting men trusting our man it could just be one because for me i didn't have a father he left very early on so the journey that i've come on that i love men and i respect and trust men shows that there was an internal journey that i had to do and it took a lot of years so i feel like it's this inner child work and meditation which can help with that and it's not something that will just happen it's a devotion and who knows how long but that is a story for you that you could nurture yeah yeah i mean i think i think that's um it's also going to uh i, I would imagine it's going to resonate with people that's listening as well yeah and it, you know i always i see people um like you and myself as warriors there's a warriorship you know to have a single parent family or not to know what in our case a man what their role is we're bumbling around in the dark we don't know what a mature healthy man is supposed to be like why because we haven't seen it you know society as well is also not yeah. that actually and it's a shame it is a real shame and so i believe i resonate with and i haven't said this out loud so many times like someone that's had a father and i can tell myself stories oh they've had a father and they've been kissed on the forehead and looked after and they get financial support i never ever had the option of doing that that's that's me being victim mode like i never had it and i really wish i did but the empowering thing is that that was my initiation that actually turned me from working from the age of 11 leaving home at the age of 15 leaving the country at the age of 19 i learned self-reliance by not having a father that's the positive yogic spin on it but it took me a lot a lot of internal work to be happy with who i am and there's something that's very painful that has turned into something that's very beautiful now but some people don't get it just like when people haven't had depression they don't know because they've never experienced it so there's like this honor and bowing of people that have been through that and i want to honor you for doing that it would have been an invisible internal journey on your own so i'm bowing in my yogic way <laughs> thank you no they have this thing in uh, yoga, it's I see the light in you, and I hope you see the light in me. And we bow. So. Just, yeah. so, just so that, you know, in the uh, when you listen to this, we just bowed. <laughs> we just bowed. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Uh, but yeah, does that resonate, what I've just said? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and it's there's definitely uh, things that I do need to work on with myself. And um, I, I know that there's going to be a, a lot of people that, that feel the same way. Yeah. Well, I want to nutshell it now. This is kind of what I'm good at doing. So I can kind of nutshell it and give you a 15 minute practice now. I'll send it to you after this. And then uh, that big nugget of information that we just found, that'll be like a that'll be you going in on your own journey. If you want further support, you know, just ask me that. Um, yeah, the self-care, I believe you get consistent on self-care, which is mastery. It's not something that just happens. You can ask for support or you can be like, right, get your fire and you can do it alone, but it's making it doable, simple, and then implementing it out of love, not fear. For years, when I first started yoga and self-care and working out, I was doing it because I was so afraid of being like my mom and I was so afraid of being uh, like my granddad. And now I'm doing it because I want to be healthy and I want to love myself as I want to be loved. That's my reason now. So that's what I encourage my friends and clients to do too. And it's nice, to, I know it sounds a bit weird, but seeing yourself as a little boy and be like, how would you treat him right now? I've got a screenshot of me as a little girl on my phone. So how how something... would you recognize that you're doing it out of love and out of fear, though? Because you, the wording is usually, oh, I should do this, I've got to do this, I need to do this. That's... Rather that's... than I want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to I look after myself today, and then I want to be of service, and I'm excited. 
you know, not every day am I excited to do self-care. Honestly, I have to trick myself, you know, but after I've done it, I always feel better. And even like my 20 minute workout, if I really don't want to get up, I'll do five minutes or tell myself I'm going to do five minutes. And before you know it, I'm doing 10 and 15. So I really have to play with the mind, but meditation is the mental part. The meditation helps me get quieter with the anxiety. Yeah, I can I can relate on that one. Uh, the essentially every morning I, I hate getting out of bed, really do. Um, I, I always I was always the uh, sleep past ten o'clock sort of person. Um, but now I've got the dog and I have to get up. Um, I hate it every every before I go for the walk every morning. Um, but I do sort of ten thousand steps before breakfast, and because mm. um, she's she likes to walk a long distance so. Um, needless to say, uh, rain or shine, uh, that has created a whole new routine for me, which has put me into this whole different space. And I completely agree that once I've done it, I feel better for it. But getting up, getting to that start point is, uh, is definitely a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. We can see like a, a screen over our head of actually everything that's going on. It's like, I really do not want to get up. No way. The you bed know? is always su super warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget because it's warm here anyway. But being in England, it's a new dimension of it in the fact that you're like, oh, don't want to go in the shower because I'm going to get out because it's cold. I can't function. So I bow to all you guys that are in the UK. Well, I've, uh, I, I've learned um, that if I don't get up, first of all, the dog will give me about 30 minutes to get up um, before she mm. starts singing to me. And then, <laughs> and then if I still refuse to get up, there are consequences. Love it. Yeah. But isn't it funny? I like this and the fact that uh, I talked this, talked about this to my client the other day. You're getting up predominantly for someone else. Yeah. Yeah. When it's you, it's so much harder. Yeah. It is so much harder. Like, take, what's your dog's name? What's Lara. Name? If you take Lara out of the equation, I reckon you wouldn't have got up as much, right? Oh, 10, 11 o'clock, easily. Not, yeah. instead of like 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, so I feel like it's a bit of a hack of, you know what you just said, your desire is you want your music, your photography, your videography to get out there contemplate and journal that because that could be metaphorically Lara it could be something else you know if it's predominantly you when you're first starting it's just harder we're not taught to put ourselves first I, I had a penny every time I said this like the yoga school is said one yourself two family and friends three work and four charity now my mom grandma showed me that it was everyone else first so to get the priorities right it just takes a long time to program ourselves to be like, no, it's me first. You know, the whole airplane thing and the oxygen, we have to put our mask on before anyone else's. But the reality of that is it's hard. So getting clear on if maybe you're getting up for Laura or you're getting up to help people, being of service, I think, is pretty much going to be one of your life hacks to get yourself doing consistent self-care because I did yoga mentoring for people one-on-one -on -one in my house in Paul the Wild. And sometimes I showed up for them. And it, my self-care wasn't that consistent at that point, like nine years ago. But I showed up for them when I didn't show up for myself. And while I was in the session, I was getting breath. So it was kind of a trick. Yeah, I, I do find it easier when it's uh, when some somebody or, or something is relying on me uh, to, mm. to make it happen. Um, because then, then you're under that, not necessarily extra pressure, um, but just that you don't want to fail that person or that thing and you don't want to let them down yeah love it that's fire that's fire in itself okay so would you be all right with me doing a mini self-care for yep. you now yep. just giving you some ideas and what i will do if you privately send me your details that i'm going to ask for i can make this even more personalized because i'm just doing it in the top of my head okay i shall write them down as you need them okay Are you ready Sometimes I find these out too quick. <laughs> so um, as soon as you open your eyes, think of three things that you're grateful for. Some people are like, that's so woo-woo. But we've got, to, we've got to think about a few things that we're happy for. OK. Then Wim Hof breathing, which I will send you. Um, 
I will send you a link. So for the people listening, what is Wim Hof? Wim Hof is um, this crazy guy that invented this technique. You're probably better off Googling him because you'll do it more justice than me, but he did this breathing technique um, to do with ice cold baths and things like that. But there's like a hyperventilation, 30 rounds that he does, which pretty much alkalines the body. And when you do that, you're predominantly your receptors just feel less anxious. So in my world, you're getting more air into your head, so you're more balanced. And if you're doing it in the morning, which is quick and doesn't even give your mind time to think, it's just a nice burst of energy. And in yoga, pranayama, which is a bit of a posh name, pranayama means controlled life force. And when we start breathing consciously, like Wim Hof, we're actually getting more energy into the body first thing. That will change your thoughts and change your mind. So you, so you mentioned sort of like the, the hyperventilation side of things. Now, yeah. would that be down more down to the uh, on a scale of in through nose, out through mouth, to fast breathing? With, uh, fast breathing. Now, you're probably better off with this. I'm not Wim Hof, so this isn't. <laughs> I was um, taught by someone that was taught by Wim Hof. You're better off seeing it visually. But um, so yoga breath is through the nose. There's so many different breath work out there, and every breath has a different reason. It. Wim Hof is energizing and to help with anxiety. This particular one sounds like for the listeners, it's like and it's in and out through the mouth. Okay. And it's done for 30 times, but when you see it, it's like your diaphragm is a wave. So you're breathing predominantly from the diaphragm first, then getting it to the chest, filling your whole body with air and making it in and out in a fast motion. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. But there are links. I can send you a link which you can send to people because his technique has definitely helped a lot of my clients and myself. And I can go into yoga, mentor, uh, pranayama, but it's just a bit more technical. And I think we'll have some more in the uh, in the show notes for for people that are interested. Okay. Yeah. So the Wim Hof would be the next thing. And um, then you already walk. So you, I think with that, keep that in. That's great. You're already walking. So um, for the time being, as little as it sounds, gratitude and Wim Hof, just implement those two things. Um, and in the shower, which sounds a bit weird, <laughs> self-concept time. Now, what is self-concept? It's like putting positive affirmations. So while you're in the shower, some people sing and do all sorts of strange things in the shower. <laughs> if you're saying things like, I am enough, I'm capable, I'm strong, I'm talented. You know, when you first say these things, a lot of doubt will come up. But in the shower, and I've actually written songs, <laughs> songs for the shower to help you like i am enough i am worthy um, and doing that in the shower is a modern way of just putting positive affirmation in there does that okay. make sense yeah and you're in the comfort of your own home you know you have no one judging you so that's it i would just do that gratitude wake up do your wim hof uh go for your walk and then when you're in the shower do your self-concept and that in itself i feel will be if you do that three, three times a week. I always like to keep it small to start off with because it feels a bit too much doing it every day. Uh, and then notice the subtle differences from there. And usually the fire is you notice that you're feeling better, you're more productive, you're doing the hard things uh, and getting further on what you want to do. And then you'll just continue to do it, in my opinion. Uh, Some I think it's going to be easy for, for people to actually even try uh, listening to this as well. So. I hope so. Oh my God, I will talk about this until the cows come home. You know, like you can uh, hire support, someone like me, or you can just have a fire that's so strong. And I've just made it so simple, 10 or 15 minutes to just do it. You know, I'm action orientated. So if you want something done, do it and you're going to feel better. But when we're feeling so bad, sometimes we don't want to do the action. So my um, excuse around that was make it so simple. But sometimes actually having an accountability friend or someone that we tell something to is what we've just talked about before. If you say, look, Doris, I've got this thing I'm going to do three times a week. You just check I'm doing it. That's that's a way of doing it without hiring anyone. So so you did mention before that, that there are days where you just don't feel like doing it. Yeah, and as a woman, I get a bit more complex because I don't want to just say, oh, you know, women in their periods, that makes it even more complicated because you don't want to do it. 
you know, or you've got pains and cramps and stuff. But the way that I've worked with that is that I have a slower and softer and more nurturing self-care to do. So I don't necessarily do as much as I usually would, but I have a, an easier program to do. So at least I'm doing something. And men still have those days, you know, I don't want to just say oh, women are different to men, but men also have those days. So if you have two practices, one that you feel like you're okay at doing and then a softer practice, Right. Okay. So yeah. So so more along the lines of um, achieving something is better than achieving nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, sometimes like even brushing your teeth when we feel depressed. I mean, that in itself, as unhygienic as it sounds, we don't want to do anything. So literally, just saying I'm grateful for the sun shining in my eyes, like just one thing, is important. Obviously, the more we do, the better we feel. But when we're in that great cloud. It's, it's way harder. So my tagline is prevention's better than cure. You know, it's so much easier. I believe I'm really good at preventing the depression. Once you're in the depression, it's something completely different. Yeah, I mean, look, luckily for, for myself uh, and in the depression side of things, is uh, I've uh, had it that long now that I'm able to recognize it. And I, I know that it's going to be down and, and then it'll come back up again. So sometimes it's just a case of riding it out and waiting for, for that switch in my mind to, to, to happen again. So, um, but you're absolutely right. When, when you are in that fog, you don't feel like doing anything. You, you literally just want to stay in bed. Yeah. And the world gets smaller and smaller and smaller and lonelier and lonelier. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, so do you think that that's doable? I'm excited with the thought. Uh, I'm going to send you all the links, the gratitude, the wind pop, and then the shower, the affirmation. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that sounds uh, sounds great. It certainly sounds like something that people listening to this um, could implement themselves. Um, mm -hmm. It probably sounds easier than it actually is. In, in, yeah, to in be honest, building that routine. Thing, it is. It's difficult. I mean, I don't even like to say that it's difficult because obviously I'm planning scenes, but this is why it's so important. Like, why do you want to do it? You know, why? Why is it important that I choose something that I can stick where I am? Or why do I want to do it? I want my music to be out. I want to be of service. I want to be healthy. I don't want to be ill and on my own. I'm single in a foreign country. You know, what happens if I'm ill? I'm on my own. So me loving myself to make sure that I'm emotionally and physically healthy in the morning, that's why I do it. So the journaling and speaking to someone like, why are you doing it? And not being disillusional that, oh, I'll be okay. No, no. It, you wouldn't do that to your baby or your dog. So why are we doing it to ourselves? I'm brutal with that because I've seen it over and over again. And, and once our health is gone, we can get it back, but it takes longer. I'm the prevention princess, apparently, because I'm so passionate. You should have that on a t-shirt. Yes, please. I was like, ooh, should I? Yes, I would like that. Prevention princess. Like, who's she? <laughs> Me. Is that an advert for condoms? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm like, no. No, I'm not that. I'm self-care. I'm air. I love it. So, um, is there anything else that that you feel like you want people to uh, to know, or you think you've covered what you need to cover? I feel like there was something that came up, and then I kind of forgot again. Um, so let me just let me do that thing where I just feel into it. Hmm. I believe that speaking to your friends about stuff is important. Like you know, speaking out stuff is important with people that you can trust. Um, and yeah, self-care, like Googling and um, researching about breath. Once you really know the reasons behind it uh, and the, where you're breathing is really important. Like the diaphragm to the clavicular, the throat breath, is two different ways to breathe. And for me, when I have a client session, the first one, I check where they're breathing. When they go diaphragmic breathing, it completely helps them with their anxiety. 
So the yoga school in 2009 were like, breathe like an elephant, don't breathe like a dog. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And what they meant was slow and calm, which is the, the belly breath. And the dog breath is clavicular and excited. And if we talk about it in terms of an elephant will last for 150 years, for example, and the dog unfortunately doesn't last as long as an elephant. So we want our breath to be long and slow because then we have more life force, we're slow and steady, and we're calmer and the calmer we are the more peaceful we are i wish really wish that people were more bothered about bloody peace than money because if we have inner peace we can have a happier life you know so we want to be peaceful and how do we be peaceful the breath is attached to that so that's something that i really want to say i wish i knew that okay so um i, I think that will be a, a natural sort of a, a pause to uh, to bring that one to an end um I hope people that are listening have uh, found that as useful. And um, how would they uh, get in touch with yourself um, if they wanted to reach out to you to uh, to maybe become uh, one of your uh, following, <laughs> so to speak? <laughs> I like it. Um, well, my website is down because I am. Um creating something new but the best way to get hold of me is either kelly reed on facebook or with kelly reed on instagram they're my two ways at the moment if you update me with your website when it's back up and running i will also include that into the show notes so have a look in there uh, if you are listening to that so i just want to say a big thank you uh, for coming on today uh it's definitely been uh, eye-opening for myself i'm going to be using the, uh, the the techniques and, and what you've uh, advised on this one, definitely to help myself. Uh, hopefully it's uh, helped uh, other people that are listening to this. And um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, uh, by all means go to thephotographyjunkie.com and over in the community section, there will be a section specifically for this episode where you can drop in comments and um, questions regarding anything you've heard today um so uh i'm gonna say goodbye now it's a pleasure thank you so much i feel so honored to be on here and i believe you're very talented and i am excited to observe your journey of the unraveling thank you 